Well, hey guys, if you're new here, I'm Dr. Dre. I'm a board certified dermatologist. Today, I wanna share what I think everyone taking a GLP-1 receptor agonist medication might wanna know, and that is what your skin, your hair, and your nails might just be trying to tell you about your nutrition while you're on these medications. If you're using medications like Ozempic, Manjaro, or Wagovi, you might be losing weight, but you might also be losing something else. So let's talk about some of the most common nutrient deficiencies that might be encountered on these medications. And given I'm a dermatologist, we're gonna be covering the skin, hair, and nail warning signs of these underlying nutritional deficiencies, how they show up, how they should be accounted for, and what you can do moving forward to make sure you stay healthy on these medications. So why does all of this matter? Well, these medications are a wonderful tool, not only for weight loss, but for diabetes management. They work by suppressing your appetite, which can lead to, well, eating less food overall, hence the weight loss. But eating less is not always a good thing if you are not eating well, especially if you're not getting in the nutrients that your body needs. A recent study showed that 12.7% of patients on a GLP-1 receptor agonist medication encountered a vitamin deficiency within just six months of starting the medication. By 12 months on the medication, that number rose to 22.4%. You want to know what the most common issue identified was? Nutritional anemia. 3% were diagnosed with muscle loss, also called sarcopenia. Though it's estimated that the real number might actually be higher. And it's also important to note that many people with obesity prior to going on these medications have at baseline underlying nutrient deficiencies. And so if those things are not checked and accounted for, well, they can get much worse when you take in less food after starting a GLP-1 receptor agonist medication. So let's break down the top nutritional deficiencies identified in this study and what some skin, hair, and nail warning signs you might be able to identify. Number one is vitamin B12 deficiency. This is actually a big one. Vitamin B12 is essential for nerve health, blood cell function, and yeah, your skin. The most common skin warning signs of underlying vitamin B12 deficiency, hyperpigmentation, especially on the face, the creases of your palms, and your body folds and flexural areas. So anywhere where you have skin creasing, basically. Like your underarms, for example. You might also notice dark vertical streaks on the nails. Aside from hyperpigmentation, you also also can get hypopigmentation or patches of deep pigmented skin like vitiligo. Some people even notice premature graying of the hair or lightening of the hair color overall. In the mouth, you want to look for a smooth, shiny, beefy tongue and discomfort in the mouth. This is known as atrophic glycitis. Oftentimes, specific to B12 deficiency, you will see these lines of depressed atrophy on the tongue, kind of like red linear grooves on the tongue and the hard palate. And these might show up before there are any obvious blood signs of an underlying anemia related to the B12 deficiency. Burning, soreness, and changes in taste are some other oral mucosal findings as well. Many people develop what's known as angular chelitis, these painful cracks in the corners of the mouth. Now, there are many possible reasons for angular chelitis, but nutritional deficiencies, including B12, is a common one. B12 deficiency can happen with a GLP-1 receptor agonist because these medications work to to delay gastric emptying. And in doing so, they might impact the ability of the body to properly absorb B12. Plus, you're taking in less B12, further putting you at risk. It's really important to monitor for B12 deficiency and pay attention and look out for any of these skin warning signs because if caught early and corrected, it can save your nerves down the road from permanent damage. Number two is iron deficiency. Now, to be clear, iron deficiency is the most common nutritional deficiency worldwide, but but it's cropping up in patients who go on GLP-1 receptor agonist medications. Some warning signs are gonna show up on the nails. Brittle nails, a nail change known as koilonychia. In other words, your nail looks like it has turned into a little spoon. It has a little depression in the center of the plate. Your hair may become very thin, very brittle, and you might also experience overall dry skin. You may notice that your skin overall is very pale, and also, like with B12 deficiency, you also may develop an angular Achelitis, those painful cracks at the corners of the mouth. In addition to an overall reduction in intake of iron-rich foods, along with perhaps a reduction in absorption, women in particular have to watch out for iron deficiency because women tend to lose blood every month, and so they are a greater risk group. Deficiency number three is folate deficiency. Now, folate works closely with vitamin B12, and without folate, your body really struggles to make healthy blood cells. Deficiencies in folate can show up in your 
your skin, of course. You may notice that your skin is pale or sallow. Mouth ulcers are a big warning sign as well as fatigue. And you're going to note that your nails become brittle. Folate deficiency is often underdiagnosed and it can overlap quite a bit with B12 deficiency in terms of the findings. But folate is key for skin and hair regeneration. Then there's vitamin D deficiency. Now, a lot of patients who have obesity at baseline have low insufficient or deficient vitamin D levels. There aren't any obvious skin signs of vitamin D deficiency, though alopecia is commonly associated with low vitamin D. Alopecia is the medical term for hair loss. But we know that vitamin D plays a vital role in the function of the immune system, and many inflammatory skin conditions, like psoriasis, for example, are associated with lower vitamin D levels. So you may find that this impacts your overall burden of disease if you have psoriasis, which many patients with psoriasis have obesity, as well as other associated metabolic problems. They, they commonly occur together. Likewise, more stubborn flare-ups of eczema may be associated with lower vitamin D levels, again, as it relates to vitamin D's vital role in immune function. So if you have these conditions and they're flaring, getting worse, it might be a warning sign that your vitamin D levels are perhaps low or inadequate, or you may be helped by ensuring adequate levels. If your hair is shedding quite a bit, it is a good idea to consider checking vitamin D if low replacement may help with hair restoration. All right, but this one is big and really one that I want everyone who is on these medications to be mindful of moving forward because it really can set you up for failure. We need to talk about the role of protein. This is where a lot of people on GLP-1s might go wrong. When your appetite is suppressed, it's actually easy to fall short on protein. Many patients report that they struggle to get in protein-rich foods. They just don't have the appetite, they get full very quickly. But protein is necessary for maintaining muscle mass. Even though only 3% of patients in the study were diagnosed with sarcopenia, it's likely a lot more commonly encountered with these medications than the numbers are reflecting here. One thing to keep in mind is that when a doctor is following your weight, they're not necessarily routinely checking weight and body composition, meaning how much of that weight loss is fat loss versus muscle loss. Some degree of muscle loss is to be expected when you're losing weight. But muscle isn't just about how much you can bench press in the gym. Muscle is metabolically active tissue. It really plays a vital role in insulin sensitivity and overall metabolic health. It helps with blood sugar control and maintaining adequate muscle mass helps long term in preventing age related fragility. When it comes to skin, without a doubt, it is a key, key, key factor in healthy wound healing. In fact, if you ever have a surgery, there's a good chance the surgeon will tell you to optimize protein intake leading up to the surgery to help with optimal healing because those amino acids are just very vital. Now, I've said this before and I'll say it until the cows come home as a reminder, growing human hair is metabolically demanding. It requires a good amount of amino acids to build hair. So protein intake is really important. You may start noticing excessive shedding. As known as telogen effluvium, it can happen with any weight loss, but if you are not getting good protein in, it's going to be a lot more severe likely. Adequate protein intake also supports proper skin recovery, healing from damage from exposure to environmental aggressors throughout the day. For older adults or anyone losing weight fast, the recommendation is to get 1.2 to 1.5 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight per day. Now you can go online and find calculators to convert your body weight from pounds into kilograms, but that works out to about 80 to 100 grams of protein per day for a 150 pound person. You also want to make sure you are combining adequate protein intake with resistance training. You can't go on these medications to lose weight and expect to be a couch potato and not move. That is not going to bode well for your overall health, let alone wound healing, healthy hair, and nail growth. All right, next up is kind of tricky, and that is fiber, because fiber doesn't necessarily show up on your skin if you're not getting enough of it, but it really does have an impact on your overall skin because it is so important for the health of your gut microbiome. It supports regular digestion, regular bowel movements. It provides fuel for the good bacteria in our gut. We know that a thriving gut microbiome and a healthy gut play a vital role in the skin. Yes, there is a gut-skin axis, a gut-skin connection. Various inflammatory skin diseases are linked to poor gut health. And if you want to know more about that, you need to watch my video doing a deep dive on the gut
about skin access because I share with you guys all the ways in which gut health directly impacts your skin. Ideally, you would aim for anywhere from 25 to 35 grams of fiber per day, ideally from whole food sources like fruits, vegetables, grains, and legumes. All right, now here's one where you're gonna be like, whoa, wait, I thought you said this, and that is hydration. GLP-1 receptor agonist medications not only make it so that people are less motivated, inclined, if you will, to take in food because their appetite goes down, but it also makes it challenging to want to drink water. And as a result, patients on these medications can actually put themselves at risk for dehydration if they're not on top of drinking water. Now, just to be clear, there is no skin problem out there, whether it be acne, rosacea, dull skin, wrinkles, that is going to be cured by, healed by, or even remarkably improved upon simply by drinking more water. For the most part, drink more water, that recommendation, all that's going to lead to is more trips to the bathroom. But in the case of patients on GLP-1 receptor agonist medications, if they stop taking in fluids because they just forget, they're not motivated to, or it seems like overwhelming, they get full very quickly, yeah, they can easily run into dehydration. Not only will that lead to more constipation, especially if overlaid on poor fiber intake, but it can obviously at that point start to show up in your skin. And one of the skin warning signs of dehydration is known as tenting, meaning if you pinch the skin, it will remain tinted, like a little tent peak for some time before going back down. Whereas if you're good and hydrated, you pinch the skin and it immediately snaps back down. This is particularly important in older adults. Older adults who might also be taking some other medications that can make it more difficult for them to remember to drink. So pinch the skin on the back of your hands. If it remains tented, that is an indicator that, you know, you might want to be up in your water intake. And remember, incorporating fruits and vegetables, they have a high water content as far as food, which will contribute to your overall hydration needs plus your fiber needs. But don't forget to drink water throughout the day. Don't wait until you're thirsty. Just stay on top of it. Drink it throughout the day consistently. If you're considering going on one of these medications, what should you talk about with your healthcare provider? And again, to be clear, these medications can be game changers for people, not only, of course, for weight loss, but hello, they're type 2 diabetes medications. But you want to make sure you don't run into nutritional deficiencies or that before starting, you're not already coming from a lower ended place as far as your levels. Some good things that should be checked at baseline and routinely would include B12, an iron panel, vitamin D, folate, and ask your healthcare provider to consider referring you to a registered dietitian to help you with your nutritional needs while on these medications. Now, I've read a lot of your comments on my other videos on these medications and their impacts on facial aging and hair growth. So if you're on these meds, make sure you check those videos out too. But what I've noticed is that many of you get these as a prescription from your healthcare provider and you're followed more or less by a team of not only your doctor, but maybe a registered dietitian. Whereas a lot of people out there are actually just getting these medications and not getting them through a doctor. They're getting them maybe through a direct to consumer type avenue where they're not necessarily going through more comprehensive evaluation. That's why I want to make this video because I know not everyone is necessarily coming from the same place when they're on these medications as far as how they might be being monitored. And it's just really something important to not neglect because you can really run into serious issues on these medications if they're not executed and supervised appropriately. And B12 deficiency, it is something that can lead to permanent damage if not intervened on, okay? Not to mention these other things can really make your life quite miserable. Also, optimizing nutritional intake while you're on these medications might actually help with some of the side effects that they're known to cause. For example, constipation can be made better in many cases by making sure you're getting in water and fiber. The sarcopenia, the muscle loss, can be helped by taking in good protein content and, of course, doing resistance training. Don't let these things slide by the wayside and pay attention to your skin. It does provide some early warning signs that something's not quite right inside. All right, guys, that's what I wanted to talk about for today's video. I really hoped it was helpful. Definitely not meant to fear monger these medications. I think they're a really valuable tool for many patients, but I do worry that in some cases they may be uh, misused or mismanaged. And these types of nutritional deficiencies are one potential risk you could run into, especially if you're not being appropriately followed and your skin, it, it'll really 
really push back on you. It will really push back on you. Now, if you want to learn more about how these medications might impact facial aging, check out my video on that very topic. But if you guys like this one, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And as always, don't forget sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye. Thank <laughs> you.